Welcome to the November Affordable Housing Trust meeting. We have a quorum, uh, so let's uh, go ahead and begin. In, in fact, the, the minutes for this month didn't make it to the website due to a technical issue, so we will get to those next month. I guess the, the update is that Greg uh, had good luck getting the support of AI to produce the minutes, and so that's a, uh, a good tip for um, the subcommittees to consider. I have the transcript from from our session i haven't fed it to ai yet but uh we do need to keep up with minutes on those subcommittees so let's not let that get too far behind us um in light of uh, our current quorum and uh to plan accordingly why don't we go ahead and and get to the, the vote items first so greg the first vote i see is item eight on the agenda was there another one that um you know um there is um uh the university drive um planning overlay um that's a more complex conversation so why don't we knock out the wayfinders thing um and then um we'll go from there so um can i just go ahead and introduce that and i uh Please. actually just drafted a basic letter today um and for context what we're we're doing here or what i propose uh the trust do is um, kind of formally, formally codify uh, support of the, the Wayfinders projects, which we've been very active in, with for many years. Um, uh, the decision on that's getting written right now, and uh, uh, the planner asked for some language um, from us to include in that. Um, so um, I uh, have a, um, a, a quick draft of a letter of support, um, which basically echoes... Um, um, you, you know, much of the dialogue, uh, around this project that we've had, um, uh, and I, and in fact, I'll have to confirm that this should be addressed to the zoning board of appeals or what, but I'm hoping we can just get a quick vote on this language and I'll zoom in here. Um, and I could read it too, if that would be helpful. Um, I'm trying to hide my <sighs> ribbon here. All right. Um, so should can folks see this right now or Okay, uh, questions or, or comments to uh, Greg's drafting, uh, you know, substantive, or if you see um, uh, points that he can um, adjust uh, on the screen right now. I, this is a question, mostly just of curiosity, but are there upcoming street modifications? Um, yeah, there's going to be, um, uh, I think like they're, I think they're narrowing it and like striping it and, and doing it, making not quite a road diet, but I think they're going to make that street a little more pedestrian friendly is my understanding. That's a good idea. And I, and I'll, a couple of those specifics I'll confirm with, yeah, with, with Nate, but I think the. Okay. Anyone else, uh, uh, Greg, just a, a tiny one here. I think in the last paragraph, if it's wayfinders, so if, is that right? So then an S on that the one there, and then Good. a minor thing, but just the last sentence of the first paragraph, maybe uh, you can after the comma, and we were proud. Allegra, please. Um, I have a few things. The first paragraph, um, 
I don't know. I'm just looking at where the blue lines are. I don't know if that needs an apostrophe after Finder before the S. No, no. let's not believe Microsoft. Just Microsoft being silly. <laughs> but then the cell, is it, is it Southeast Street School or just East Street School? Because I don't remember. Like, I, I should know whether or not it's Southeast Street there versus like regular East or it's... Northeast or... Where it crossed. I believe it is Southeast Street, but I also have a brain bug with, with that. <laughs> so yeah. I will I will confirm it. Because I think the building itself was the East Street School. Yeah, so that's just, the thing. In the next line, it says East Street School. So I just think um, making consistency there. Um, and then the third paragraph, last sentence feels a little wordy and maybe we could just say we'll allow residents to walk to the new fort elementary school great yeah good suggestions it, it does seem to be east <laughs> street school from looking on the web Oh, all right. If, if there are no other questions or comments, do we have a motion to uh, stand by, uh, uh, put our put the trust's uh, name to this letter? I move. So, or Carol, do you move? Uh, Go ahead. <laughs> uh, I move to approve this letter and have Greg send it to the town <laughs> like yeah i think the cda or the town um, okay second okay um let's uh have a, a a vote um erica yes alex yes rob yeah okay rob yes uh, allegra yes and carol yes and i vote yes so uh that is approved And uh, so there, there's nothing else that we're, we need to vote on then, uh, Greg. Well, the, the thing that, that might um, benefit from a vote if we get there would be this, this right. uh, taking a position on the University Drive housing overlay. Good, which, okay. Um, um, I, 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 hopefully that letter ended up in that packet. Now I'm paranoid about, it. okay, it did. Um, so would it be helpful for me to, to, to give some background on that or it, it, it it's kind of embedded in the letter to some degree, but um, um, I'm seeing a nod. So should I? Yeah. Yes, Greg. Why don't you give us a, a, a kind of put put this back on the radar for us, and then we can sure, sure. Um, get so, the, the the letter in front of us as well. For sure. So Nate has um, spoken to us uh, about this a few times, and he's at the ZBA tonight, or otherwise he'd be here. Um, but the the basic premise, um, you know, is that uh, you know, you know, after a, apparently a couple of years of different, you know, different zoning ideas and, you know, d different approaches, there was uh, sometime last year, uh, a, a fair amount of consensus around, um, you know, rezoning in some centers, you know, uh, and, and doing it fairly significantly. So that's what, uh, you know, Nate and, and other staff members move forward with. Um, and then the planning board uh, acted on it and sent it up to the council. But the, the specific thing, um, that is being proposed is a uh, a housing overlay um, on the University Drive corridor. The map was in your the the folder there, but essentially from um, Route Nine up to uh, Amity Street there, um, and this would uh, be uh, allow for you know significant density of um, of apartment buildings um, and some amount of mixed use, um, you know, which would be a, a substantially more you know, bigger uh, build out than exists there right now or is allowed there right now. The 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 basic one of the basic ideas embedded in this is that this would be student housing um, or would be attractive to those who wish to build housing aimed at students, I should say. Um, and it could suck up a lot of uh, a lot of demand um, for student housing, hopefully then limiting that demand as it manifests elsewhere in um, you know, in single family homes and further afield places, um, you know, and hopefully making space for, uh, you know, for 
you know, others, potentially full-time residents or, you know, or, or families to, to access those resources. That's the basic thinking. So the, um, you know, it's been kind of percolating. It, it went from the planning board up to the council and the council, I guess, kind of, I'm not quite sure what the functional mechanism is, but they sent it back to the planning board and then also the community resources committee of the council who are about to consider it. Um, and I have some dates and the, the public dialogue around it and as well as some of the dialogue within those bodies has begun to focus a great deal on some of what is there now, um, uh, perhaps to the detriment of what could be there in the future. Uh, um, and um, there is potentially some concern around, uh, you know, around, you know, that, that concern with, with, with current commercial stuff there derailing uh, an, an effective overlay, you know, uh, uh, to, to actually get the originally intended outcome, which was to, you know, suck up some of that student demand. Um, so that's kind of like the quick nutshell, I think, or the, the medium nutshell. Um, are there specifics or, you know, and I think, you know, the trust could just choose to, to sort of this, you know, kind of draft letter or memorandum that I made and just do something like that. You could, you could not, you could put it off, you know, um, but if, if, you know, I, I'm, I'm curious, you know, I think if there's consensus, it's something we could act on quickly, but if it's something where folks have different perspectives, it might, you know, um, then, then we, we might choose to pass, you know, so that's kind of. Yeah, Allegra, please. I don't know if this is what you're referring to, but some of what I've been hearing has been concerned that um, Big Y would perhaps be impacted, which I do think is an issue that we need to consider because of the basically food desert status that most of Amherst has. Um, and I would be hesitant to contribute to that Um if 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 there was a way for there still to be increased density you know from from you know going towards amity but leaving in place some of the amenities that year-round residents and student residents living in apartments nearby would need to access um that would be my my big concern with not quite understanding where the boundaries of the overlay might be and and maybe asking for clarification around that as a stipulation to anything we would write and support. Alex, thank you, Allegra. Um, I, I was also going to mention the, let's see, in the draft letter, it's the bottom of the third paragraph where it's talking about existing commercial developments. I would certainly be comfortable voting today to send a memorandum showing support for the overlay, but I would like to see that removed since we don't know where the boundaries are, what impact it would have. And I feel that might be out of our scope, um, that if we're promoting this, it should be purely from a focus on increasing the supply of housing and meeting demand for student housing, so. Thank you. Uh, Carol, please. Mine is a very um, dumb question. I can't find the letter. I have not been all together lately, I totally admit, but I'd love to see. I kind of agree with the thing that people said, but I, yeah, I don't uh, even know what uh, it says. So I'd like to see it before I say something. I have it in front of me. Greg, do you as well? Do you want to share it? Yes. Um, it was Shepard on screen. Yeah, oh. let's do that. Actually, maybe so, work. you know, um, uh, given Allegra and Alex's comments and the issue, you know, not just your comments, but the issue that you're highlighting, I, I wonder if what we might do is um, strike that particular letter and somewhere in the in the letter say that we're we're sensitive to the um, importance of access to to, to food um, in or something to that effect, um, you know, highlight that we we consider that a worthy consideration to be steering this process. Uh, 
Shall I zoom more here? This That's good. What, what, what do you mean by uh, make localized economic impacts through clustering of consumers? Just basically like you, you put a bunch of college kids in a tight place, they'll buy stuff, you know, I mean like that, hopefully the, the, you know, they would patronize, you know, first floor and, and, and retail on the corners, but good feedback. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Um, Erica, please. You can also just tweet that per, per Alex's point too. Um, I, I absolutely agree with uh, Allegra and Alex. Um, I, I think we need to consider um, what exists there um, because you know we're a holistic community. We just don't do parts. And housing and um, access to food is really important. Um, but I just was going to ask a question, which is, um, do we have any data on the North Mills area, which has an, um, apartments over retail spaces and students uh, or, or residents using it because there's still lots of empty spaces there. Um, so, I mean, I think, you know, existing commercial businesses that, that have been proven, I don't, I think we need to consider them and I think we need to support them. Sure, okay. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I think um, at full build out, I think this would probably have a lot more beds than um, than the North uh, North Square. I think you're talking about does, um, but it's also the case that um, we're learning that like mixed use is is, is not always economically viable um, in in the way that our, our our Sim City dreams would want it to be, <laughs> you know. That's a national thing. I just not Amherst. Rob, I wonder if you have any any reactions one way or the other. I, I agree that I I don't like that third paragraph at all. I, I don't agree with it. So okay. Yeah. Um, I'm just wonder. This basically assumes the, the way it's written, it seems to assume that what is going to be built here is student housing. And maybe that's true, but I wouldn't mind if there was other kind of housing built there also. And so I don't know. I mean, it does say eventually, um, which can help the demand for additional housing, especially including student housing. And that's cool, but somehow most of everything else makes it sound like it's going to be students and I don't, it, it, it very well may be, but I don't know that I'm happy with crossing out any other kind of acting like that's a foregone conclusion, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Sure. Greg, uh, 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 if I may just quickly, do you know what the next hearing or, or, yeah, yes. intersection um, offices. So yeah, and, and you know, and one one thing we could just kind of shift this to an announcement, you know, and encourage folks to go in way with weigh in with their individual thoughts on it. Um, I'm sorry, I got set a link. I do have these dates. Hold on, I just have to open the document. Um, CRC, uh, sorry, planning, it will consider it on 11, the, November 20th. Likely they'll also continue it to the 18th of December. Um, and the CRC is scheduled to look at it on the 3rd of December. Agree, please. Um, I do agree with what Carol is saying. And I wonder, I mean, because I know that one of the groups of people we've talked about needing to, you know, hoping that housing would be developed for would be some of the staff at schools. So I, I don't know if, if that can either be reflected in the letter that perhaps this would be an opportunity, not just for student demand, but maybe for partnerships in, um, and staff housing and, 
or if that's getting too into the weeds. <laughs> um, well, yeah, I, I mean, you know, if I could respond a, a little bit, you know, I, I think it's reasonable to just, you know, reflect back like what, you know, I think, is, is, you know, is, is fair to sort of quote as the, the inciting idea, which is that, you know, not not by letter of the law, you know, not not by by a regulatory obligation, but by just looking at the market, um, that it, it, it's most likely that the um, the consumer segment that the market is likely to build toward, especially in that spot, um, you know, would be students, uh, you know, and and interestingly, the, the exception to that would be you know inclusionary units that would be included in this, um, but. But I think that, you know, the sort of inciting idea that, you know, I, I, as I understand, came from the council and the planning board, you know, was to find ways to um, to capture student demand in a more localized area. As they know, as different parties noted, it kind of spreading throughout town, um, you know, and, you know, so and, you know, that and thus, you know, the, the single family um purchases that are getting bought by investors, that kind of dynamic. Mm -hmm. The hope was that this might alleviate some of the the juice for that kind of less favorable uh what what is seen by some is less favorable you know you know student housing like you know kind of distributed all across town and not really purpose built for that reason um so th th this overlay wouldn't preclude anybody from building other housing but you know our best guess would be that that the that's probably what what it would get aimed at um by the private actors that you know, would build stuff, um, you know, but, but with the, but, but my understanding is with the express idea of, of capturing that demand, a, a big chunk of that demand there. Um, and as opposed to elsewhere, you know, mm -hmm. um, thus making space for some of those other constituencies in other parts of town. So I, I wonder if setting aside the immediate this question about whether we want to sign up to this letter and if so what it would say, I wonder what is our area of consensus with respect to this project? It is is our consensus that we we like the idea of a district where you can have high density housing and university drive seems to be appropriate? Is that is that where, I mean, do we have a consensus around that proposition? Um, yeah, Allegra, you, does that seem? Um, so if that's the case, I um, I guess what we would wanna be telling these uh, town bodies is um, we, you know, find a way to do this that is responding to everything else you're hearing, um, but we don't have to say that second part um and so would we be comfortable just saying that we we support the um we support the the university drive corridor as a means to achieving high density housing and this seems like an appropriate location is that worth sending on at this time i guess is my question is that a meaningful message to try to convey do we do we add anything to the conversation with that statement? Yeah, Carol. I th I think that's worth saying. I mean, or maybe it's so obvious that it seems like it's not worth saying, but sometimes those are the things that need to be said. Okay. Um. So, because that's that's to me what's important. This is a place where we can have high density housing. We can build things up. We can make them bigger. We can put more building per foot of ground or something or other. I don't know quite how to say it, but it's a place where there can be density. We support density being there for housing. Okay. And the rest of the details, yeah, I, I don't want to see big Y go, but, yeah. but that, at least to me, seems clear. Okay, so I, I don't know if we want to use our time now to try to get to that more uh, minimal statement. And so, um, Greg, do you think that we could try to get an, a, a more focused letter that, that fits the, the trust consensus? And is, is it realistic to try to approve something like that in an offline method? 
by email? Um, certainly we can get a more streamlined uh, text. Um, I, I, have to, I have to apologize for I'm not knowing if we can officially take votes via email or not. C Carol or Erica, are, 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 you have a recollection of that at all? I don't think we generally do take votes by email. <laughs> I think votes well, usually in person. Well, we, but can, I think... we, can, we can vote on it now and um, uh, right. Right. And, um, and basically ask for any objections. And if there are none, then it goes out. How about that? What we can do is uh, we can actually uh, vote on um, feeling comfortable that you, Gaston, okay. um, would ensure, and Greg, would ensure that what we stated today would be in the letter and give you the ability to then make that decision and um, move it forward. Okay. So, and so, so let's, let's just rephrase then for, you know, so, um, you know, we support high density housing, uh, you know, uh, and, and we hope that, um, you know, that you continue to pursue that goal, um, you know, in the context of, um, you know, of other dynamics, which you have to manage something like that. Well, we don't even have to say the other, yeah. I'm sorry, I'm yeah. talking too much. Yeah. Just no, no, I, okay. I, yeah, I think you're right, Carol. I, uh, Alex, please. Um, I I would prefer if we didn't use the term high density housing and instead opted for something like higher density housing. Um, they don't within their proposal actually classify it at a certain. I, I mean, they give like a density requirement, but they don't classify it as medium density or high density. So I would prefer that we say higher density, which is the language they're using in their proposal as well. That's Great. Fine. And uh, so, so uh, yeah, Rob, please. Um, I'm a little uncomfortable with this. Uh, I apologize, Greg. I don't mean anything personal, but but the the tone of the of the third paragraph is really reminiscent of of. Uh, previous planning director and and I think I'll, I'm not sure I'm sure I'm not the only person who will read it that way so I, I really do not want to see that kind of tone that that kind of um, uh, discussion of, of motives and and um, uh, biases in, in a letter that comes from us so so if if we're if people are sure that that's not going to happen, okay. No, well, but, I mean, uh, yeah. Let's uh, what? Let's just delete it right now. Um, and um, um, I mean, I, I think, and what I'm hearing is that what we're really comfortable saying is we want to reaffirm our our commitment to expanding housing, and that we support the um, the the vision to. Um, introduce higher density housing on University Drive. Yeah. Is that 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 that's that's about right? So I think this can be a very short par you know one paragraph sentence and just remind them where we we support what you're trying to do and the subtext is figure out how to do it in a responsible way. Yeah. Okay. okay. Sure. Okay, so um, the um, let me kind of restate that to see if if someone is comfortable moving to um, uh, kind of uh, in, empower um, uh, Greg and I to um, draft this and 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 send it out. Um, the the statement would be that we um, uh, stand behind uh, cre adding housing. Um, uh, in, in Amherst, it's, it's sorely needed, and we support the vision to introduce higher density housing to University Drive. I like it. Okay, so can can we have a motion to um, get a letter out to that effect that that kind of leaves everything else out? Well, I move uh, that Greg okay. and Greg and uh, Gaston write that letter as. Gaston just described it. Okay. Second. Do we have a second? I'm ready to second it, but I saw Alex's hand up. Sorry. Yeah. Alex, please go ahead. 
Yeah, um, I wanted to echo the sentiment of Rob. Um, I don't mean this with any offense intended, but I don't know how comfortable I am agreeing to send out something that I haven't read in its entirety yet. And I would be much more comfortable if we had another chance to look at this. Okay. Um, yeah. Okay. Um, let me... Um, um let me uh let me kind of draft something in the background here um uh what what do we have next on the agenda and we can come back to this um uh carol how you doing um, i'm okay go I'm ahead just, okay um so we are um i can give a quick uh there's a couple other town updates um i, I can get into actually Great. uh um, so, um, yeah, if you want to compose and actually yep. some of this guest song yep. might be familiar with. Um, so, uh, um, also in, in planning board land, um, the, um, the planning board has cons begun considering the, the, um, ADU bylaw, which, um, needs to be updated at least modestly in order to match recent state legislation and sync up with that, um, it looks as if their initial swing at it will really be fairly narrow um, and address the, the basics of state compliance. Um, uh, and then possibly there, there might be a window for another round of updates or if, if developments happen soon, maybe within this round, I think the previous scenario is more likely, but the state's going to release some regulations um, uh, interpreting the law, which, which might, color things a bit more. Um, and then a very specific piece of that, which the state regs will probably almost definitely address, but then there could be, um, uh, could be courts might address um, uh, what unreasonable restrictions means uh, in, in the law. Um, um, uh, because um, that's, that's, a, that's kind of undefined to some degree. Um, so there remains from the state, some, some ambiguity there. Um, so it, locally, like what that means is, you know, as we, you know, as we, develop this regulation there could well be be uh the, the the big change for amherst is the state law now precludes the uh requirement of um of owner occupancy um in either the the principal residence or the accessory dwelling um so you know so folks responding to that might um wish to impose uh other restrictions um in order to get the outcomes that they want um, and it's, uh, you know, it, it's not knowable, you know, how the planning board might respond or that the council might respond to that. Um, but, you know, things that, you know, sort of, you know, require extreme setbacks or, you know, put, you know, onerous occupancy limits or this kind of thing um, could run afoul of eventual state regulations, you know, and also if they're too extreme, possibly hinder um, development of these. So it's a thing to keep an eye on. Um, so um, that will probably get um, the planning board will refer to council and then we'll come back down just as the, the university drive overlay uh, will. Um, that's a little bit further out. There's not really dates for that yet. They've, they've done, I guess, like a first reading at the planning board. Carol, question? Um, yeah, I just wondered, you said that they will do something or other and then maybe something or other will come in a later pass. And I just, could you say sure. a little bit more about so, what the first something so or other is? The planning board's intention is to do a fairly modest update that really just does the bare minimum to match with state law. Um, uh, but then it is possible that, uh, well, it's, it is definite that the state will come out with regulations. They might do that and then the planning board might further update it. But if they're still engaged in their first round while those regulations come out, then it'll be one round, you know. Uh, so it, it could be two rounds, it could be one round, probably two. Um, or it might okay. be that they get it right the first time and the state <laughs> regs come out and they don't need to do any additional updates. That's a possibility as well. Um, Thank you. Um, so, yeah, so that's the kind of the ADU uh, bylaw update question. Um, there are uh, downtown design uh, uh, processes happening. There's going to be some meetings and forums in December. Um, uh, so if you're interested in that, have a look out um, for those announcements. Uh, Wayfinders, uh, the, you know, the project we just approved, um, they should soon have a decision from the ZBA. Um, uh, and then as far as 
you know, there, there is an issue that emerged, um, which we can maybe learn from and then apply next time. But there's a specific thing um, I think our, our education and engagement group might might chew on. We talked about this a bit, um, but helping to reconcile the Conservation Commission, who um, might be pushing for uh, better wetland protections on one side and the ZDA who might be pushing for more parking um, on the other side. Um, uh, and that, that puts th those things are basically in direct opposition to each other. Um, and there might be a, uh, an opportunity to, um, to sort of bridge between those two bodies and, uh, and reconcile that um, if that dynamic emerges in the future and in, in future projects. Um, but it doesn't seem to be uh, like it's going to derail things um, uh, here in this case, but um, it slowed some things down though, is my understanding and, and, and made for some, some head scratching. <laughs> uh, so, um, uh, so we don't need to act now, but um, just to maybe a, a preview for ways that we could get in front of stuff in the future. Um, and then, uh, yeah, that's kind of um, the town updates uh, other than housing production plan stuff, which we can get into in a couple of minutes here. Um, um, yeah. Oh, okay. Um, let me, let, let me kind of, um, I, maybe we can finish this together in, in short order. Um, uh, we are, just get the, uh, here we go. Um, So I, you know, as I was writing, I, I, I feel like we almost have, kind of have to have to say explicitly that there's a lot here that we're not getting into. I, and that's why I was trying out such a phrase. Um, and so I wonder what, um, uh, um, what, what reactions you have, and if we can finish drafting this together in, in short order. Yeah, Carol. Why do we have to say expectation of housing demands in Amherst? Why do you have to say anything about supply and demand? Why isn't it just in strong support of the expansion of housing options in Amherst? Um, Period. The, the, the only reason was to um, uh, kind of allude to the expected impact on affordability. That was the that was the that was the thought process, but I I, I don't think it's critical. Uh, so you know that that could go or not go. I guess if I, I get, I mean, it would be nice to say something about of uh, the expansion of housing options in Amherst to hopefully better serve a wide range of people or something. I just don't like supply and demand. Yeah, I would okay. like to get it out of there. All right. Um, um, I mean, you know, maybe this is, maybe this is really the, the, what's the kernel of our, of what we, uh, uh, agree on is that, does anyone see that we agree on and, and feel it's important to say anything that goes beyond this in any substantive way? Uh, Alex. Yeah. Okay. I think that it could be really helpful with something this short to strengthen it with referencing our own action plans and goals. Um, the one that comes to mind is 1E, which talks about exploring ways to strengthen the development ecosystem in Amherst with innovative or new programs or policies, which I think this falls in line with. Um, if we're expressing support for this without giving a lot of additional context, which I'm okay with. I think we should connect it to our ongoing work and basically just say we find alignment with it and leave it at that. Okay, other 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 comments or or, or reactions? So, um, if what we're talking about is a letter that makes this very simple point and um, you know adds a reference to 
connect it to uh, some aspect of our um, of our strategy, the development strategy, and and uh, uh, perhaps other parts of it. Um, do we think that it's valuable and that we would like to send such a letter? Okay. Um, um, so I would, it, it, would you, you know, Alex, before I think for good reason, you expect express hesitation to proving an un, unseen letter. If what's unseen is exactly how we tie it into the strategy um, with, with, but we're basically agreeing just to say this, um, and, and, and then pointing out that this fits our, our stated strategy and, uh, in, in a way that it's aligned. Um, are we now within the space of something that this, uh, trust could now approve without being finalized? And if so, uh, w yeah, I mean, I guess Alex, I'll, I'll put it, put it to you first. Is that, does that, would that be copacetic? Yeah, I think I'd be comfortable with that. I, I apologize. I don't mean to be. No, a no, no, I, 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 just... I think it's, I think you were, I think you were right. Um, um, this is, it's a sense, you know, if it's showing up in the, in the, um, Gazette and in and the indie, it's a sensitive matter, and the community has to figure it out. Uh, we're we're just one voice, and we stand for one 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 area of issues. Yeah, Carol. Can, can I... Oh, uh, you're you're muted. Sorry, and... we write yeah. we write to now that mute thing is okay. Uh, we write to reaffirm our strong support for the expansion. I might say this expansion. Okay. Because it's not just, gen this is a particular expansion in a particular place. And this is what in this moment we are saying we want to support. Okay. Rob, Rob uh, uh, thoughts or, or suggestions? No thoughts, I like the way it's well. Okay, okay. All right, so, um, uh, uh, Can I ask for one modifier that, that just goes yeah. back to our earlier conversation? Um, yeah. I, I think I heard some consensus on the idea of, you know, supporting higher density uh, homes. Yeah. Could we say, you know, so insert the connection to the trust, you know, strategy one E, whatever it is, you know, and we think, you know, uh, adding higher density homes in this area um, would represent such a creative strategy or, or okay. whatever the wording is. So, so the sentence might be af after this policy or af after the um, the insertion of the the goal language. Um, we believe higher density homes, as proposed in this plan, represent such an innovation or whatever the language is. Yeah, could be connected more, 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 uh, more cleanly. But um, uh, uh, th uh, th thoughts or, or reactions to to Greg's, um, what you know, the the bringing back the recognition that we're not only supporting more housing, but we support high higher density housing as a means to achieve this end. Okay, and so um, uh, could we have a motion, if if that's where the trust is, to um, uh, approve uh, Greg and I finishing the, the letter within the confines of what you see before you? Um, so what what remains is just the technical drafting, uh, Alex. Um, if I have a, a draft i've been working on, on in on one in the background too can i propose it now as maybe a substitution to what we have it, it's less of a substitution it's more of a, a completion yeah. of what we have okay let me um stop sharing okay go ahead okay um let me see if i can share screen maybe. 
Um, yep. Can you all see the the drop? Could you? Yeah. Now, if you can uh, zoom in, so it widens. Is that better? Yeah. I mean, I guess my my, per my issue is I don't see how what here is about the development ecosystem. I, I, I'm missing that linkage. So maybe you can spell that out. Yeah. Um, so I think the, for, from my reading, um, a zoning overlay is a, a new policy that I would consider a new policy that strengthens the development ecosystem by increasing the amount of land for developers to build higher density on. I mean, there's not much of it in town, honestly. Um, but if other people don't agree with that, read well, we can certainly I, remove that. I I I think I, I just I understand ecosystem to be the players that are connecting here. Um and so I I that's why I don't have I don't know what what changes with how it will get developed. Um that's why I I wanted to look through the strategy to see what was um, the clear connection that I could see and development is an obvious one. And so I, I'm, I guess I don't see the development ecosystem as being implied by the overlay. Well, I think, you know, and we don't have to say it, but I think it, to the degree that it, it, it pulls energy from less preferred capital outlets into preferred capital outlets like that strength that that gets to ecosystem to some degree doesn't it i mean you you, you uh, rob you uh, you were in the um in the group that came up with this language who who, who else was in this subgroup with shelly um so i i think uh you have the right of it, yes, on the that that when the language was developed, it was about um, it, it wasn't looking towards zoning; it was looking towards um, making it possible for different kinds of of development, different kinds of of players to to participate. So, so, I, so I I I agree with you, but I think I think you could stretch. Um, the meaning of ecosystem to include uh, a new overlay, but it okay. wasn't wasn't the original intent. Okay, all right. Um, um, I kind of agree with what Rob just said. I, it's not at all what popped out at me thinking about making a higher density place on University Drive, it wasn't, mm -hmm. it was it was a use of, kind of use of zoning to make more things possible, but I don't, I don't know. And I, I, I actually, Alex, I think it's important for us to understand how this thing that we're doing connects to our goals, but I'm not sure that we have to tell everybody that we're talking to how it connects to our goals. I'm not sure that feels to me like an important thing to be in the letter anyway. We need to understand that, but I, yeah, I don't know. Well, but th thank you for preparing these these other paragraphs as well. Um, you know, I was, I guess, given the circumstances, going to go for something leaner, but um, uh, what are your thoughts about paragraphs two and three, um, folks? Would would you like a letter to have text to the effect of paragraphs two and three? I, I uh, think, yeah. Thank you. I, I think um, I, I like both paragraphs two and three. And again, I think we can leave the one F out, just the trust action plan. Um, yeah, we leave that out. But I, I think this puts out our principles and and what we 
are looking for more. So I like the way it's written. Okay. Other other uh, comments or uh, or uh, or or a motion um, to uh, to approve the draft that we're looking at. Other other comments or questions or a motion. Oh. I don't, mm. Yeah, go ahead, Carol. I don't like this. We find alignment with this proposed overline between or something. We find alignment be the la the language there just seems slightly okay. All right. awkward okay. to me. I don't know. Okay. I mean, so what I really was wanting to make sure is that we're we're comfortable endorsing university drives an ideal location i get that that's a stronger statement than than yeah. so is there consensus to say that is i guess what i want to make sure about um you know allegra uh rob yes. is that you're everyone's good with that i mean i think it's better to say the strongest thing we feel comfortable saying and and i was Kind of going to a lower common denominator than we are at so that's better to be a more robust uh, so uh, do we do we have a motion to uh, uh, send this letter on to um, the, the next body in action here? I make a motion to send this body um, with the strikeouts, strike out all the way from goal to the end there, uh, and then the other goal IF. So I make a motion that we go ahead and send this letter. Um, anybody want to second it? Thank you, Erica. Yeah, do we have a second? Okay. That's that's a second, Rob. Yeah. Okay, great. Um, so let's uh, let's take a vote. Um, Allegra. Um. I'm going to abstain. Okay. Is there something that we could remove to convert your abstention into a uh, yes? So I think my only concern is still not quite understanding if big Y is included in the boundary that we're talking about or not, because I have significant concerns about removing food access to the community. Mm -hmm. Do we know that an answer to that, Greg? Because you know, I'd also be comfortable saying that um, that we we um, um, you know that we that we have that concern, or that we're we're sensitive to other important considerations before. Sure. So, um, so at, at the at the propo the proposal they are currently considering does include the Amherst part of the big Y complex. That complex, however, spans Amherst and Hadley. Um, uh, so, but, but one of the things they're considering is, you know, is, is that question, right? So unlike the sort of <laughs> thrown together draft, which I, I, I started with, you know, that this is a, to me a, a bit more narrow and a bit more thoughtful, you know, so I, you know, so I think this, this takes no position on, on, I think that this allows for them to continue tweaking boundaries, for example, whereas maybe what I wrote before doesn't, but, but as currently con contrived, the, the proposal the planning board is looking at, um, does include part of the big Y complex. Yeah. And I guess like my, issue with the language around commercial entities or whatever it, however it was phrased in the first one is like I don't see this as like oh I want to protect big wise like profit margins it's, it's I want to protect it's it's a food justice issue it's um sure not a yeah. like I, um, I care about capitalism issue <laughs> it's I, of course. yeah yeah, yeah. I, and I think I use commercial just as to differentiate from residential basically yeah. <laughs> but um, yeah. um you know but yeah, I think, um, I mean, I, you know, I, I, maybe I should refrain from offering an opinion here about on, on what this says first, you know, but, but I to answer the question directly that, you know, they're, you know, they're considering 
a map that includes the big Y thing, but they could say, no, we want to, we want to take the big Y plot out of this overlay zone. Um, so, you know, you know th that's why I had, I was starting to do that phrase that was like recognizing. So we could preface the, we perceive with recognizing the importance of access of access to food for residents or recognizing the importance of access to services some some qualifier before we say we perceive carol well to me food it's i like saying food because okay. i feel a lot different about the fact that we're a food desert than that we're a bicycle repair shop desert or yeah. a secondhand clothing <laughs> store <laughs> desert i mean it's not commercial it's not that okay. it's food so, so i would rather say it that way so recognizing the importance of access to is there a more elegant way of saying food uh, to fresh food or something uh, and recognizing the importance of grocery stores to the community that works i guess we perceive does that does that get us to something that we all um um i i don't like although because that means yeah. I, right. I would yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of going back to model United Nations and how they do those preambles uh, yeah <laughs> um uh, um uh, you know uh yeah I yeah I mean I would just I guess I um the, it's really a phrase, not that not, we're not writing to tell them that we recognize the importance of the food access. We're carving that out of our statement. Um, I mean, I, I don't necessarily see something wrong with naming that there has been concern raised in the community about food access, because I think that is Right. So the other way, noting, noting, um, noting concerns in the community for continued access to food, we perceive or um, we see. I mean, um, we hope you'll um, we encourage reconcile the, these and other concerns while still achieving this high density vision. We encourage you, and we're not hope. We encourage you to yeah. consider um, these concerns while we while we, still maintaining the ideal location for higher density ho housing. Topologies bugs me also, but whatever. Typologies. Yeah, uh, yeah. I think we can just say housing. All right. Well, we. Um, we we devolved into a drafting session, but we're we're also figuring out what we mean to say. Please, anyone, feel free to jump in at any moment. We're just no, well, yeah, you, you're, you're, I think fin finish that sentence. I think you've, um, I think you, you've, you've done a good job there. Um, All right. Um, so, uh, uh, comments on this. Um, uh, uh, I guess the the motion I'd be looking for would be to send uh, a letter that is, you know, substantially similar to this, so that we can give it a once over outside of the pressure of of the Zoom drafting session to get any particular word right. Greg, is that a hint? Uh, sorry, uh, but, 
what was my hand? Oh no, you had your your you have your your, your yellow hand up. Oh, sorry, <laughs> it was yeah. that's from a while ago. My bad. So, uh, uh, if if uh, this is substantively pleasing to everyone, uh, could we have a motion to uh, send a uh, letter that is you know substantially similar to the draft before us? So moved. Second. Yes, second. Okay, great. I'm, 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 I feel much better about sending a letter that we all agree to. So appreciate that, um, Allegra. Uh, uh, Rob. Uh, yes. So let's take a vote. Um, uh, Rob. Yes. Uh, Alex. Yes. Carol. Yes. Erica. Yes. And I vote yes. Um, excellent. So Greg, thank you for getting the ball rolling for us, and thank you everyone for. Uh, sharing what you think. It means that we all actually care about what the trust stands for, and that's critical to what we're doing here. And thank you, Alex, for uh, driving the, the draft there. Please go ahead. Yeah, as a procedural question, Greg, how do I get this to you? Do, do, can yeah. I just email it? Just email it to me. Yeah, it might just be like, cast on to you for, you know, P's and Q's, but okay. I would, yeah. I just, I don't totally quirky thing i would love it if it didn't have the word typologies in it when it goes yeah um, I, it's, that's gonna get the x <laughs> <laughs> it's okay um all right thank you uh everyone let's see what we got next on our agenda um, so we are production um, plan? housing production plan um so and i believe hopefully we still have tony here Tony doesn't give up. Here he is. I'm um, so I'm going to welcome um, Tony Young to um, join us here from Barrett, who you all met a few months back. Um, and so um, we did send out the um, the housing production plan on Tuesday. Um, um, Tony's going to share some highlights, um, uh, but um, I'm it maybe it would be helpful to understand. Uh, what well, I should say not the housing production plan, but the needs assessment. Um, uh, how many of us have had the, had the time to look at that? I did that... not look at it. I just reviewed the housing production plan as it was sent to us. We didn't have a whole lot of time, so it's it's okay. Yeah, I didn't look at it. I can. So we're we're, we're talking about pages. Um, what's the number on? Um, PDF page uh, starting six. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, so the, the the all that's constructed so far is the needs assessment. But um, well, I know Tony. Um, you know, but Tony did pull some excerpts, and so maybe we can have um, an initial conversation here. Uh, maybe I'll just kind of set up, um, and you know, the basics, and Tony will delve a bit more into the overall framework. But um, this is a draft housing needs assessment. Um, you all are the first folks to take a crack at it. Um, beyond. Nate and I, um, uh, but we'll have until probably uh, mid-December, and we can come back to this at our December meeting as well um, um, for some more substantial discussion too. But maybe we can uh, we can start here and, um, uh, and re refresh folks on kind of what this framework is, and then um, if folks have feedback now, we can, we can take some. But noting um, uh, in noting, we'll, we'll have other opportunities. Does that sound? Right. So Tony, welcome. Thank you, Greg. Um, yes, it's totally fine if you haven't taken a look yet. Um, I'll just go over, you know, briefly some of uh, the details. Um, and actually, can I uh, share my screen right now? Oh yeah. Can can you do you have a button there, Tony, for oh, share yes. or? Yeah. Uh, good. Um, okay. Are you uh, all able to see this? Okay, great. Um, awesome. All right. I know it is a you know pleasure to see you all again. Um, I'm you know I just want to say that you know, we're really excited to have reached this milestone in the the project. Um, so you know we shared with Greg, um, who has shared with you, the uh, first draft of the housing needs assessment. You know which documents. The current housing profile um, and needs in Amherst, um, based on various sources of data um, and interviews that we had conducted, 
Um, I'll quickly go over uh, the sections in the uh, draft. Um, the demographics section is a general overview of who lives in town and who makes up the, um, the Amherst population and uh, their social characteristics, including trends and projections on you know, total population, age groups, student enrollment, uh, things like that. Household characteristics uh, focus on um, the composition of households in town, um, breaking down households into you know, household sizes, uh, ownership types, um, income and poverty. Um, and then the housing market section focuses on uh, the physical, sorry, the housing profile uh, section uh, focuses on the physical um, characteristics and features of the current housing stock. And the housing market entails uh, the development patterns, trends on housing prices and um, demand, affordability gaps, and data points on uh, housing instability. And lastly, um, the housing barriers and development constraints section list factors that limit housing development. Uh, we want to emphasize that you know, we do not consider barriers um, that are referenced in this section as inherently negative things. Um, for instance, the, uh, the specialized energy code that was recently adopted um, this past summer uh, may increase um, construction up, uh, costs up front, but you know it'll ultimately you know foster energy efficient construction and help the town um, reduce its carbon footprint um, and meet its sustainability goals. Um, and just to give an an, an example, all right. So I just want to you know point out just a few data points, um, some highlights from the needs assessment. You know, out of many. Um, in the draft uh, that stood out to us. So the first being the affordability gap of $314,000. Um, so what this mean is, you know, let's say a family in Amherst makes $97,000 a month. Um, so up in this, uh, the table in the top right corner, uh, that is the area median family income um, that's that was calculated by HUD. Um, so this family can afford a home at just two hundred eighty-five thousand um, dollars and one hundred seventy-six, uh, based on standard mortgage terms, um, insurance rates, and uh, other factors. That um, you know, if they were, if they were to limit their housing cost burden below thirty percent of their income, so that is a difference of just over you know. $314,000 between what they can afford and the median single family home price um, of $600,000 in 2024. Um, and then we also found that there is a lack of medium density housing or missile middle, missing middle housing. There is a higher proportion of either single family homes or uh, large apartment complexes. And you know, the production of small to medium multifamily housing had declined in the past 40 years. Um, for homelessness data, we um, we looked at the uh, point in time count uh, from three county continuum of care, which uh, had reported that there were 74 sheltered and eight unsheltered uh, homeless individuals in Amherst. Uh, but that is based on a single point in time count in um, in January uh, 2023. Um, and further 8% of all residents in Amherst, um, you know, live with a disability and over half of them have, in fact, a cognitive disability, um, you know, which suggests an importance um, to design housing, you know, not just for mobility impaired individuals, but, you know, also for those with invisible disabilities and highlighting the need for um, universal design principles. Um, a couple of uh, more things. Um, so looking at map data provided to us uh, by the GIS department, um, we found that 30, 36% of the uh, entire town area is protected um, 
as open space. And 15% you know, of uh, the town areas is, in, is a, in fact, a farmland conservation um, or zone for farmland conservation. And further um, looking at wetland protection zoning and overlay districts, um, they cover approximately 30% of um, the uh, entire area of town. So that includes uh, the watershed protection uh, overlay, um, which is up here in the blue in the top right corner of a uh, boundary and the aquifer recharge protection overlay district um, over the Lawrence Swamp aquifer in the, the southeastern corner. Um, as, and additionally, the uh, flood, prone, flood prone conservancy zone, which follows along um, this river um, through South Amherst. Um, so this this thirty percent does not include the pockets of wetlands outside of these uh, zoning and overlay districts, which um, you know can be hard to see in this map, but they're very uh, very small, just um, just laid out and across the uh, town, and um, are not necessarily within uh, these three listed uh, zoning or overlay protections. So. We still need to uh, investigate further. We still need to further investigate several topics um, raised by the trust um, back in September. Um, so Greg had asked you in that meeting um, that we were developing this draft and um, asked for specific topics or data points that you would like to be included. Um, we were able to uh, find data for several of them, but uh, there are still quite a few left um, standing. Um, you know, for instance, the uh, needs of certain segments of the population um, and downsizing demand among older homeowners, that will hopefully be um, answered by the, uh, the survey results that we had just rolled out recently. And <clears throat> sorry, the, the rest are just other topics um, where information is uh, simply not readily, readily available. And so we just need to, you know, dig further uh, to find that. And then we'll get to uh, identifying town properties for housing um, in the next stages of the uh, housing production plan. So please, you know, remember that the uh, this needs assessment is just the first component of the uh, housing production plan. Um, so there are other elements that are missing or unaddressed that are you know, still yet to be developed. The next two components are the uh, housing goals and implementation strategies. Housing goals will be broad and somewhat aspirational, but at the same time realistic you know, on what we can achieve in the given time frame of five years um, to address you know, those needs that are identified in the uh, needs assessment. And the implement, uh, implementation strategies are a detailed list of actions and areas of opportunities that would move the town towards its goals. So, um, so the goals and strategies in the housing production plan um, may very well overlap with a few of those in your action plan. And uh, the needs assessment contains evidence to support a few of these. Um, for instance, and we addressed uh, the social political climate regarding housing in Amherst, which is you know a persistent barrier to development that you know can be addressed by uh, you know more education and uh, public engagement, um, and also creating at least two hundred homes um, in the next five years is a reasonable target. Um, that we can include in the production plan, um, you know, followed by you know, several specific implementation items to uh, reach that target. But, you know, with that said, we do want to ask the trust, you know, for more clarity on um, how these goals from your action plan might align with uh, the goals in the production plan, you know, because we, we anticipate that the, the goals in the, and strategies in the production plan you know, maybe more, a bit more detailed um, and more extensive beyond the scope of the housing trust. 
um, and involved other town entities. Um, and so we would, you know, just appreciate a bit more guidance on, um, on how you would like us to navigate these two different plans. Um, you know, and you know, to what degree you want your action plan goals uh, be integrated into the production plan. Um, but that uh, can be, that can be for a separate discussion. Um, okay, so you know, we invite you, you know, as a trust to take a read through this draft and um, you know, give us feedback on anything that needs correction or things that we may have missed. Um, you know, this, so this is the very first draft of the housing needs assessment. We'll go through a few rounds of revisions. Um, and this is this is the very first draft that we're showing to you. Um, so please just keep that in mind. Um, we understand that you know, some of the data is not perfect. Um, there are inherent limitations to the data, um, but we try to use the best sources we have available to us that are fairly accurate, credible, um, and at the same time represent the sample population as objectively as possible. But you know, because of their limitations, we want to make sure to verify that information, um, you know, with people who actually live and uh, and work in Amherst. Um, and you know, the housing plan will uh, greatly benefit from that from your perspective. Uh, perspective. Okay. Um, so you know, with that said, we have uh, what we call a a common resolution matrix. Um, I. I have uh, I sent a copy to Greg, who can then forward them to each and every one of you. Um, so this form helps us organize your uh, feedback in a way that um, so that we can like go through each comment one by one um, and make or address those uh, those um, comments individually and know exactly where to locate them in the document. And it just makes it um, easier for us and. Um, so, you know, some of you have already read the draft and, you know, we, you know, we love that enthusiasm and, you know, but, um, you know, we highly encourage that uh, you fill this form out as you go through and review the draft. Um, if, if you don't want to, or if you cannot use the form in any way, um, at the very least, we ask that you provide the page number um, alongside any feedback that you share with us. Um, you know, just to, again, help us locate and identify the specific uh, issue that's in the in the document. Um, okay. Yes. I have a, a question. I'm trying to make sense of some of these, the population numbers. Um, it's striking to see on page, uh, which is it here? Uh, I guess page... 16 that UMass has added 10,000 students um, since the year 2000. And I'm trying to reconcile that with the population of the whole town chart on page six, which shows mm -hmm. an increase of um, less than 5,000 or about, yeah, less than 5,000. And so Correct. I'm wondering what, what, did the town lose 5,000 people other than the students or what, what, how do we reconcile those two numbers? Um, so there could be a couple of factors. Um, you know, many students don't exactly live in Amherst. So a lot of that, that increase in student population are not counted in Amherst. Um, but also, um, you know, non-students may have in fact moved out as well, you know, families, Younger families have uh, there are data that shows that they have um, that their numbers are declining. So that that is also something that you know may have contributed to that discrepancy. Thank you, Tony. Erica. Thank you. A little slow getting to my mute. Um, I think that's my biggest challenge. Um, I mean, the we always talk about you know one of the biggest challenges in Amherst, as well as a huge benefit, are college students. But when I read this, like, for example, the poverty level, I'm not sure we have the students in that 
population than when we look at that? Or how do we remove the students from that to see, you know, full year residents? Um, and so a lot of the, the data that's presented, sometimes I really get confused with regards to, does this include all the students as part of it? And then mm -hmm. if it does, what does it really look like for uh, year round residents who are sort of permanent here? Um, so that's that's one of the areas. And I don't need for you to answer it, it's just in one area that I'll point out when I'm rereading it. The other piece that, um, again, I only looked at it, you know, I read it today very quickly, um, the tier one communities. I know we had raised way back when that, I mean, at least I would be interested in comparing Amherst to other uh, college communities. Um, mm -hmm. And I'm not sure that I saw that, um, but I also couldn't find out where the tier one, when you wrote tier one, what those communities were. Sure, uh, I can address those real quickly. Um, so the first comment, um, yes, we are we are going to, or hopefully try to reach out to um, certain organizations to um, sort of uh, help us, you know, identify, you know, data that isn't, um, so the data that we have for, you know, the poverty uh, level, right? That's um, ACS census data, which, you know, does not separate students from non-students. And it's very difficult for, you know, any survey um, to do that. Um, so what we can potentially look at are, you know, results from the survey, um, which can help us identify, um, you know, income levels um, and those other, you know, socioeconomic factors um, related for uh, to each demographic or segment of the population. Um, so that can give us a little bit more insight into, um, you know, the data that we have. And um, and just speaking with, you know, other housing organizations can also shed some light, further light on like who's applying to um, affordable housing, um, and what, you know, their application applicants look like, um, you know, you know, and we can sort of uh, distinguish that from, you know, the the overall census data, or at least have a better understanding of. Um, the, that breakdown. Um, and for your second concern, um, sorry, can you quickly remind me what that was again? Sure, sure. Um, we had way back when asked about uh, possibly comparing Amherst to other college towns okay. versus the towns that are next to us. I mean, I know that South Hadley has Mount Holyoke, but I think it's very different than Amherst. Sure. Um, Yes, yeah, so we decided to um, when we delineate delineated the uh, tier one communities um, that was established in the previous 2015 housing market, um, and the reason behind that be, uh, behind those comparison communities is because they share a lot of uh, economic activity and um, you know people who live you know to be near Amherst um, tend to. Um, you know, live uh, in those immediate areas surrounding towns. Uh, but we do realize a lot of people, you know, commute from further away, like Greenfield. Um, and it would also be a, a good um, a good idea to compare Amherst with another uh, university town, um, you know, that, that isn't so immediately uh, close by. So we, we'll uh, take that into consideration. The questions or comments for Tony. Something that you were hoping to see here that you're not sure is in the needs assessment and um, distinctions that would be useful to you and any anything at all here. Yeah, Rob, please. Um, not addressing that question specifically, but it's something that Tony said near the end of, of the presentation about aligning uh, the trust action plan with the housing production plan. I actually would not like to see that. I would like to see you do your um, your assessment independent of, of what we've already come up with. And, and, um, and if our plan doesn't um, 
address what you've come up with, then then we should think about changing it. So it should mm -hmm. be on us, not on you, to to make it um, fit. I think. That's okay. Um, I guess very quickly, I, I am curious how when you were developing the action plan, how you as a trust came up with um, two hundred. Is that um, was that? <laughs> I, I would appreciate a little bit more, you know, uh, insight on that. If Inspirational. We were looking for, uh, I mean, we, we had considered prior production plans and I think, um, you know, what the numbers were prior and we were encouraged to think five years and have an inspirational number. Uh, I think there's another word for it, aspirational, aspirational number. I see. And, Another yeah, and I think we said. Go ahead. No, you go ahead, Carol. <laughs> I was just going to say, in a way, it's like, well, we know we can't build as much housing as we need. And so there's no point in putting that number in there because it's impossible. Let's try to put something in that's aspirational, as she said. But that it's exactly 200 is pulled out of our ear, frankly. Um, and I think we, you know, we saw, I think our, our, as a stretch goal, this is, these are units that the trust can play some active role in, right? So we allow that there will be a, conceivably, you know, other development, you know, perhaps, in, you know, with inclusionary or whatever that we might not play an active role in that could go bigger than that number. Um, but we thought that this was an aspirational number that, you know, we could play, some degree of, of support in, in, you know, in, in that amount, but it's not, it shouldn't be reflective of demand. And I think Tony, you know, we could, um, it'd be interesting to, to see, you know, numbers, you know, if we could get there of like, you know, you know, Amherst needs, you know, this many more units for extremely low income people or this many more units for, um, you know, middle income families and n noting that that number might be radically higher <laughs> than, uh, you know, what the trust uh, uh, might come up with. Um, but, you know, as we said, you know, the trust isn't the only operator here. Sure. Uh, yes, Carol? Well, yeah, Carol. One of the questions I have after looking at what you just presented to us, 64% of our land is useless for housing. It's it's wetlands, it's concert, whatever all those things were, and and that doesn't count all the all the land that's already housing. So one of the things I'd like to know from the housing production plan is what's really possible here. Amherst is not any bigger than Amherst just is, and so I would really like to know, not some aspirational goal, but what is some goal that makes sense given the actual land mass of Amherst that could be built on. I'd love to know that. Yeah, um, I think we've heard uh, a couple of ideas, but um, we will, you know, we will for sure get into that um, in the coming months as we, uh, you know, go or dig into, you know, the goals and then, you know, what is looking at opportunity sites um, and, you know, in addition, like what we can, what's possible, what's feasible, but also, you know, aspiring to be a bit, aspirational as well um okay i actually just have one more slide um and then i can um we can answer the rest of your questions but i would just like to finish uh this um so you know we have rolled out the survey um a few weeks ago um if you haven't taken it already please do um you know, and share it with everyone you know We've got a lot of their, uh, we've gathered a lot of uh, input from, um, you know, people who live in Amherst and, uh, you know, other stakeholders, but, you know, in, in interviews and in uh, in person public meetings. But, um, you know, the survey casts a much wider net of people who don't often engage with uh, these in person or, you know, virtual outreach uh, activities. So, um, it's going to be very helpful for us to understand the community on a, a bigger scale. Um, and then finally, we're uh, planning to hold the next public meeting in 
on January 7th. Um, so and this is going to uh, focus on uh, housing goals and we'll be asking uh, the public to help us develop them um, as as well as uh, you know strategies uh, to uh, support that. So, um, okay, uh, yes, if you, I'm happy to answer um, any more questions now. I think Erica, you had a, a yeah, I, I'm not sure I saw this, but um, it just goes back to what Carol said. But I'm, um, you know, I know that the town is starting to rethink some of its properties. And so hopefully that's considered too, because, you know, the properties might have been developed, such as uh, decommissioning schools or other properties, and, and really thinking about, you know, some of those properties that might be developed and not excluding them. Um, and I also wanted to say it was very thorough and um, really appreciate the work that you've done. So I should have started with that. Um, but um, yeah, just I, I think any property that we can consider, um, you know, we don't have factories that are being decommissioned, but any properties that, you know, our, our town owned that are going to be decommissioned, we need to think about those as possibly being developed as well. Of course. Any other questions or comments for Tony while he's with us? Well, I'd uh, like to thank you for your ongoing work and uh, for, for joining us tonight, Tony. Of course, I uh, appreciate you all for having me. Um, and yes, I believe, Greg, you have, do you have that copy that of the, the CRM? Yeah, I, that, I, I, I do, and you know, and I might, um, maybe, maybe we can brainstorm offline about some ways to, you know, to do some conversations around I think that's really good for some of the nitty gritty stuff. But I think once mm -hmm. people absorb the whole thing, I think there might be potential for another, you know, more 30,000 foot conversation, um, you know, so sure. maybe we can certainly in December, but, you know, we can talk about the best process for that. But yeah, I'll get that out to them for sure. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, all right. Yeah, that's, uh, I look forward to, uh, you know, the next steps uh, in working with you all. So thank you. Have a good night. Thanks, Tony. Thank you too. Bye. All right. Um, so we we have, I think the only other item um, on our agenda is to have a quick check-in on how the subcommittees went, but also before we get there, sh share with you a request that came to us. It's not ready for action, but to get um, the, the trust reactions. Oh, sorry, Eric, I see your hand. Sorry, I, um, did I miss the community pres preservation uh, debrief? No. Oh no, I, we 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 should also do that. Um, shall we begin there? So, um, yeah, Greg and I pr presented. I I I started by just presenting uh, how the statute works and uh, backing up the way that we can receive funds and our strategy that we've adopted and who we are. And Greg got into recent uh, projects to show the kinds of things that we're doing and gave ideas about uh, the kinds of projects that, that are likely coming our way, especially in light of the uh, Affordable Housing uh, Act passed by the state. Um, I guess, how wh what would you say about the kinds of questions that we got, Greg? Um... You know, some some interesting questions about, you know, uh, who we're partnered with and, you know, if we ever partner with for profit entities, maybe probing a little bit, um, uh, you know, um, you know, and what our current resources are, um, they, a request for our current balance sheet, which I think is probably the same as they, they have already. Um, um, you know, it's, it's some questions about how federal developments might um, might affect us and you know, or really affect the, 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 the partners that are building stuff that, that we support. Um, we don't really know the answer to that. <laughs> Ultimately, I, right. you know, I offered some ideas, but, um, you know, but I, I, I'd say the receptive, the, the reception was largely positive, um, but yeah. hard, hard to read the tea leaves though. Um, yeah. The, 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 what came at us were the questions that anyone came up with. For example, Greg talked about the idea of having a revolving credit line. Uh, as some other communities have done. And so there was a question about um, 
is that difficult to do? Can you, is that, does that raise complications or something like that? Um, you know, in many cases, the questions I thought it was interesting, the question about the for-profit, it seemed like the reaction is, oh, he wants to make sure that we're not supporting for-profit, but it actually seemed more like he's concerned that maybe we need a lot, maybe we need for-profit developers to actually get the housing we need. And are you going to be able to support that as well? Yeah, I was trying to, so I was trying to split the difference there a little bit, not really knowing where yeah. he was coming from. I mean, you know, I, and I, um, and there are interesting, you know, there are far more compelling mixed in to me, mixed income models than like standard inclusionary housing, you know, that, um, some communities are doing. And, you know, um, I guess in a way we have with, with, you know, with North square. Um, but, uh, but yeah, yeah. It, you know, it, I, it, I don't know if the questions had a through line necessarily. It was, yeah. you know, um, the, um, the question about the in lieu payment did not come up at all. <laughs> and if anything, the, um, when we presented the strategy, um, and our goal of raising 4 million, but they did the math and said, oh, well, but you're only asking us for 500,000 and it's five years. So how are you getting to 4 million? And so I had to say, well, we're actually going to ask other people for money too. <laughs> um, we're going to go to the schools for money as well. So, um, yeah, I mean, I, I I think we got a positive reception. It's good we're not competing with anyone else for affordable housing. Uh, really, that's good. Yeah. And yeah, nobody balked at the number or anything like that. So let's see. Um, any other questions about that? I guess the tape will come out soon enough on YouTube if you want to get bored by our Q and A. Um, uh, so yeah, great. You want to you, t tell uh, folks about this organization that came to us to see if we may be able to jump in to give support. Sure. So yeah. So so we got a you know an informal sort of uh, you know an inquiry kind of probing possibility you know around um, supports for. Um, eviction prevention, uh, rental arrears, that kind of thing. Um, you know, now that the, you know, so, so, something perhaps loosely echoing, um, what, uh, the town did with ARPA money, um, presumably on a smaller scale, um, you know, and so, um, you know, so Gaston and I had an initial conversation just to sort of understand the interest more and, and who the different players would be. Um, and I did a little research, you know, just on what we've done in the past. And, but I think, you know, the, I think the idea here tonight was just to sort of take folks temperature on, you know, on, I mean, I, I guess the other, the other wrinkle is it didn't seem prudent to entertain an inquiry like that, not knowing what the answer from CPA was going to be. Um, uh, and that, I, you know, that, so we, we decided to push off, you know, a, a little bit until maybe we had a little more insight on, on how that looked. Um, but I think, you know, the idea was to sort of just get a sense of, you know, what, what, where folks are on the idea of, um, things like, like non-capital expenditures. So, you know, expenditures other than, um, um, building homes, uh, you know, which is, the trust has engaged in, in, in non-capital investment before, but we thought it might be good to just get a sense of, of where folks right. Basically, are now. Supporting, keeping people who are um, on, you know, uh, where eviction means they'll never come back to Amherst again. And so preserving the affordability of folks who are living in town, how do we see that in relation to our mission? Um, what what reactions do folks have if we were going to entertain that kind of support what guidelines do you see appropriate just curious about about where how, how folks see that kind of request i mean clearly it fits in within the umbrella of supporting affordable housing um uh, but it's different from creating housing it's a, more about uh supporting those tenants who um, given what happened last month with their car, will not live in Amherst again unless they get some immediate cash support. Erica. Uh, oh, sorry, I, I hope I didn't cut into you, Allegra. Um, 
You know, we, we always talk about, you know, the 30% and lower under AMI. Um, and I think, you know, for me, this is my knee jerk reaction, which is, is that I agree with you, Gaston, we have a mission that includes uh, maintaining people in their homes. Um, you know, the other part of it, though, of course, I think about sustainability and making sure that, you know, we're helping people to get back on their feet versus um, enabling them not to get back on their feet ever. And eventually they will be out of their homes or out of their right. rental space. So, I mean, my first reaction is this is part of our mission. And I'm also thinking, you know, we receive money from the interfaith group on housing. And so there's some money there as well. And my understanding is uh, from um, uh, hearing from one of the meetings at uh, the CSSJ is that um, there were people who applied for ARPA support um, due to COVID and some you know, negative impacts of COVID and they never received support around that. So I think you know, this is worth a conversation and worth a real uh, strong discussion about um, how do we do that and how do we ensure that it is supporting people and helping them to become viable in this community and stay in the community. Thank you. Uh, Allegra, what do you think? Um, I mean, I think I'm a little bit biased because my first job out of college was working in an eviction prevention program doing rental assistance. But that said, I think it's like the back door of homelessness. You know, you don't want to have people leaving a housing situation that may otherwise have been stable for them. Um, obviously hiccups come up here and there and it's, it's a way of keeping housing affordability depending, depending on what the whole financial picture looks like. Um, I think it's also sometimes <laughs> really hard to, see the good work that's done with our money because we have to wait like 10 years from like an RFP to like the building and people going into it. Um, so it, it, it is a more immediate need that can be, a, you know, hopefully addressed more quickly. Um, so I think it would warrant further conversation. And, and I do agree with what Erica says is that I think there are some concerns that previous programs have had many limitations that have actually made it difficult to access funds. So I think that talking about what realistically it would take for a person to access funds and what kind of viability there is for the tenancy going forward is important to think about. Yeah, thank you. Uh, Carol, please. Um, I feel incredibly mixed about it because it feels like, uh, what am I trying to say? I, I would like, I would welcome a conversation actually, because I feel so mixed about it. So I'd like to be able to talk about it more, but part of my first reactions are we leverage so much more than we put into it when we are developing property that we get so much more for our money. And then there's something there that gets to be a house or a home for hopefully generations of people, not just this set of people right now at this moment. And I don't have the faintest idea how to balance that against this family right now who lives here is not gonna live here anymore if we don't do something. It feels like they're so different and both important, but it does feel to me like there are more people trying to do the, if this family doesn't get some help right now, they won't be here anymore, than there are trying to do the, we need more housing in which somebody or other could live sometime. So that's my conundrum or whatever it is, and feel really mixed about it. And I would take a lot of, probably take a lot of understanding how uh, more than I do right now about how it possibly would work in order to be in order to not want to try to keep focusing on making the housing affordable some way I don't have to be just the ways that we do it I'm hoping we can find better ways more creative ways new ways of doing it but still that leaves it more focused on the housing or I don't know i I pass. I half don't know what I'm saying anyway, but I just feel like there's a there's a tension here, and exploring it would be fine. 
Okay, good. No, no doubt there's a tension. And so we're just kind of cracking into it. Um, and, you know, we have, we can engage in a portfolio of activities and we can put limits on the different kinds of activities. Um, other thoughts, um, a Alex or Rob, any kind of initial reactions here? Yeah, Rob, please. Yeah, um, I, uh, I assume we're not being asked to to run a program. Oh, no, no. Be, be, there's other people doing it. They need cash. <laughs> right. Okay. So, so, um, so I would also be interested in knowing uh, why, why they need cash from us. Is it, is it they're not able to fund those sorts of things elsewhere? Is it, it would it be an ongoing thing? Would it be like, would it be like we get 15% or 500,000 from CP every year? And then they would ask for 10,000 or, or 20,000 or whatever from us every year. Um, I'm open to that, but I, but I, but I sort of want to know what the details are. Yeah, Greg, I mean, uh, my, my sense was they were able, there was a huge need for this post COVID and then the funds appeared for it and the town administered the funds to the program. Is that Get, yeah, right. so the, yeah. The the way the COVID program worked is there was an external partner that um it. that vetted families and, and managed the applications, and then the and then with their approval, and and, and the town contracted with that organization, and then with their approval, the, the town actually cut the checks. Um, uh, so this model would the would be a little bit different, and I'm because they haven't made a formal application. I don't want to name organizations, but um um th this this one would necessarily look a little probably look a little bit different and involve a couple of different players um uh but there's you know th there's you know th there's uh, some interesting um people involved who might be able to answer some of these questions in, in more detail you know um but i you know yeah so i you know, yeah. basically we said like we we come back to you know if if there was a if resources and b like some level of interest that we come back but we didn't want them to make an application if there was no real interest at all alex any uh kind of immediate reactions or, or questions to raise about the the ask um no i think it just a lot of what everybody else has said. I look forward yeah. to learning more about it and okay. would okay. happily entertain that application and conversation. Okay. Oh, oh, right. I mean, um, yeah, my, my reaction was, you know, th this is within the scope of our broad mission, but how we choose to execute our mission is the question. Erica, go ahead, please. I was going to say precedent. Um, we have in the past provided funding to Amherst Community Connections, uh, and they have in the past come to uh, the trust. Um, you know, since I've been here in 2019, have come to the trust for some support, um, and the trust has provided that support. And I really think I, I like the term portfolio uh, or spectrum of work. We have said, you know, from um, uh, uh, being on housed in terms of prevention to housing people all the way to home ownership. So I think, you know, within the spectrum of the work that we do, I think they, there is a certain amount of money we could set aside for something like this. We did it for COVID emergency and I think we should consider it. I just, Erica, did we actually provide money ever? I know we wrote things in support of their applications, community connections. Did we actually give them money? Yes, I just we don't did. remember. I believe you. Yeah. Okay. Just, yeah. Okay. We did um, via the town um, and Way Wayland came uh, and asked for funding. Um, and I think it was way back in 2019 or 2020, but it was, um, she did come and asked for funding. Um, she's also asked for letters of support, but at that time it was funding. So, you know, one step we could take would be to say um, uh, we would like to be educated about what you're doing and how we could potentially fit, noting that we still need to make sense of how it would and could fit into our mission and activities. Does that seem to be the, the next step that the trust is comfortable with to get, get educated by them in, in relation to their requests? That sounds good. 
Greg, Greg, what do you think? Yeah, I mean, I think um, I think that it makes sense to invite them to make a request of us, okay. um, you know, and and maybe with that invitation, we'll note that our you know our funding timeline, you know, is is, is in part predicated on our incoming resources. Um, but I think getting it to the degree of where where our our function is considering a request. Um, and, and as part of that, getting educated, you know, rather than just ask for some generic education okay. without off, without, without giving them the, you know, that, that will, you know, we'll give it some real consideration. I, I want to, if we're going to make that request, I want to, you know, make the offer that we'll, we'll consider the request. So. Okay. Are folks comfortable with that, with, with, with inviting them to come to a request, I guess, with the qualification that. Um, we're figuring out whether and how this could fit into our, our mission and activities. Is, are, are folks comfortable inviting them to come make a request with something like that proviso? Uh, Carol. I, my only, because we're, because at least I feel early in the process of figuring out whether this will fit or not, I don't want them to feel set up they're going to educate us a bunch and then we actually don't want their request anyway. I don't know how to so the proviso has to be really strongly, I think, that um, this is, we don't know if this is the thing that we're exactly going to do. If you want to come talk to us about it anyway, please come, but don't get your hopes up too much. Or I don't know how to say it right, but that's my concern. Uh, uh, I think that's fair. Yeah. Uh, if, if folks comfortable with uh, that kind of... Uh, um, uh, way of framing it. Yeah. Um, uh, Allegra, does that seem all, all right? You're, you're comfortable with that way of putting it? Um, uh, Alex? Yeah. Uh, Erica, please go ahead. Um, I think an in-between might possibly be that they submit to us a proposal and then we then have them come. Um, and, and this is just brainstorming. We may not want to do that. We may then want them just to come, but if we're not comfortable with you know, even being at 65% thinking we might support them and we think that might be best is for them to submit to us the need, how they're going to do it, et cetera, and then invite them to come to answer questions. Um, that might be an in-between step. It seems like I'd ask them to do a lot of work before they know very much about what they might get, but I don't know. Well, I... How about giving them a choice? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I guess the, 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 if you have the, the conversation, Greg, that kind of conveys what you've been hearing. Sure, sure. And then, you know, and then say, and, and I can request that they submit a, and I, and I guess their proposal will be kind of outside of what our standard framework is, but I, I can, I can guide them in that, um, you know, uh, and, you know, then we can look at it, uh, you know, maybe next month, um, and then decide if we want to invite them to come answer some questions. Right. I mean, the the so uh, do we invite them to come in December, or do we invite them to submit a proposal that we can d discuss in December, and then um, invite them to come back in January, unless we felt moved to act on the papers. So uh, invite a proposal we can review in December or invite them to come to December. Uh, do people have a strong feeling one way or the other? I, I, Rob, I, I actually think Erica's proposal is good. Um, okay. I don't think it needs to be a detailed proposal. Just we need a, a framework to understand what, what it is that they're be, being asked. So I don't think it's necessarily a lot of work. Okay, all right. That that sound good to you, Greg? Sure, sounds great. Okay, I can roll it out. Um, great. Um, who is chairing the uh, education and outreach subcommittee? That's me. Okay, uh, Allegra, you want to give us a, a window into how your meeting went? Yes, um, we had a productive discussion. We talked a little bit about the wetlands parking lot to groups having divergent needs <laughs> um, and kind of 
had tabled whether or not that would be a main focus of advocacy at this point. Um, Alex had made a suggestion to put together some, like a simple kind of brochure, or some like almost like trust marketing material. So if we were doing something like the block party or at any events that we might schedule throughout the year, if they're in person, we would have like something tangible describing our work. Um, so I, I don't know if that was something that we had ready for tonight or if that was something. No. Okay. Um, and then the League of Women Voters, um, John Hornick and Rebecca Frick and I had met on last Thursday to talk about doing kind of like an affordable housing 101 meeting. We have a tentative date of January 23rd, um, and we are hoping that that would be a hybrid format so that we could have in-person participation at the town room and then Zoom as well. Um, and John was planning to invite um, some different players in the affordable housing world in Amherst to give snippets into different pieces like development projects, getting community on board to support things. Um, and had asked me to do a little overview of the need for affordable housing in town. Um, so that is kind of a quick overview of what that program might look like. Um, so that would be in January. And then I think we were just going to kind of think about what other boards and committees it might be helpful to collaborate with um, for our next meeting. And as of right now, we've decided to meet once a month. Um, and I did I leave anything out? OK, no? excellent. Okay. Um, this, I mean, it sounds great. This uh, divide and, and conquer is uh, productive. I mean, of course, we were benefiting from those of you who worked on the strategy with Shelley, which um, was really uh, very important. Um, uh, Erica and Rob, uh, who, who, who got tapped to be chair? That's me. Uh, okay. <laughs> so I, I feel like, um, like we're way behind uh, compared to what the Education Outreach Group is doing. Our, our our meeting uh, was about um, developing a, an internal strategy for for how to approach the work that we want to do. So so first of all, um, we know that raising four million dollars is is not going to happen next year. It's it's a five year plan. So 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 um, what we started with was was. Um, uh, determining what what sort of information we need in order to develop a, a coherent and, and realistic strategy. So gathering some facts, um, um, figuring out what the, what the what the lay of land is, and then um, we'll come back later and and using those facts um, start to develop action steps. But we're we're I think we're a little behind um, where the other. It seems to be. Awesome. Allegra, you're breaking, you guys are breaking the curve. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, well, just to, so the strategy we took in our development meeting with Carol uh, Grover and, and Greg was to actually run down the sub points in the strategy and basically identify what are immediate um, next steps we can take on every single one of these. And um, so for the identify two or more parcels, um, uh, you know, G Greg agreed to take on communicating internally with the town to see what information could be um, uh, obtained. Um, uh, land donation from local educational institution. Uh, Greg has been cultivating a relationship with a very uh, proactive um, person who's the point person at Amherst College um on on this front um so 
I guess the, the next layer would be if you have any any updates on these, Greg, but um, maybe I'll just kind of, so basically we, we went down the list um, on the um, on the development ecosystem point, which we referenced earlier, um, I've agreed to reach out to banks, which I have not done yet, um, but to find out the banks that have been financing ADUs and see um, you know, whether and how we can get them to frame offerings for the Amherst community. Um, uh, the, the, the path for non-conforming lots, first step was getting data from the town. Um, so our approach was to try to kind of create a, a little checklist of actions um, nested under the six prongs of the development strategy. And yeah, I don't know, Gr Greg, if you have any anything to um, any anything concrete to share about about any of those items. Um, you know, on the um, uh, on the college front, um, nothing super concrete other than like just like positive relationship building. And um, I, I continue to think there's um, there's good energy there uh, um, that needs guidance rather than convincing. Um, and it, you know, and it seems like there may be. There may be things bigger than Amherst afoot in a good way that we can kind of become a block in a bigger regional strategy, you know, uh, you know, so I, so I, it, it, there's, you know, there, there's, um, yeah, that's kind of all I'll say now on that okay. front, but it's, you know, I'm talking about the private colleges, not, not UMass, but, um, um, yeah. And then on the, on the land front, um, uh, apparently nobody did respond to our RFP <laughs> for, uh, for the other school site. Um, so I, I, I'm, there's some question I'm going to re-release that or what. Um, uh, so I'll go from there. Okay. Yeah. We were gonna ask, were we not gonna ask for lists of what try to develop or Greg was gonna get for us lists of what are yeah. the town properties? We, what are the, yeah. all that bunch of stuff we wish we knew? Um, yes, and I'm not there yet. Um, uh, no, that's fine. I just want to, <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay. another thing yeah, we yeah, are going to try to do, not that yeah. you should have done it already. Yeah. And one, one, one of the things I'm remembering now, you know, thinking about what we just heard from Tony, you know, one of the things that where there is a point of synergy, I think quite clearly is that we can, um, as that's, is this, is the, is this development subcommittee really push into the housing production plan sites, um, you know, so if there's priority development sites that we're aware of or become aware of, um, you know, we can we can house them. We can we can we can request and or direct that they be included in the housing production plan. So whether and that could be, you know, there's a bunch of, you know, uh, not uh, not conforming parcels over here, you know, that we should take a good look at. And that could also be like, hey, here are eight landowners you know, who have great sites, including town as landowner, where we could do 40 projects on, you know? Um, uh, so yeah, so one actually I've been thinking about um, being very thoughtful and intentional about how we launch the housing reduction plan, such that at some juncture when it's done, you know, we'll have to make sure we kind of elevate that juncture. You know, we could, we could ask landowners to make an announcement, come to a press conference, sign a letter, you know, um, <clears throat> you know, uh, that, you know, we're committed to this, you know, rather than just put it in a list, we could, you know, we could have some folks, you know, point to themselves on the list, you know, which might, you know, put some PR around the whole thing. Okay, good. Allegra. I you have, have a question up? about something specific that was said. It was, RFP school site, what? Huh? <laughs> so, uh, so there is another. Uh, uh, no, not Wildwood. Um, the old uh, South not, Amherst campus. Uh, thank you. The old South okay. Amherst school, which is like I guess a storage annex now, yeah. um, and looks to be a pretty good housing site. Um, mm -hmm. There is a hope um, to. There was the the building commissioner was hoping to do a similar process that we did with uh the vfw site where we engaged an architect to um uh to do a short-term sort of you know pr produce a concept uh and you know and, and deliver that in like a three or four month period that, that kind of thing um in, in advance of a proper rfp for a developer 
um so yeah so that the the initial attempt and that wasn't i forget what they call it. it's a seeking written quotes it's a little bit less significant than an rfp i guess but um uh we, we didn't get responses to that one um uh so we i guess he might reissue it um i don't actually know that um that part of the vfw site is the fairly sophisticated end product um uh I don't know that we uh, a more basic affordable housing development would, would necessarily need as much thinking. So I, I don't know if it, if it would be as vital in the program side. It might be useful in the um, community relations side. Mm -hmm. Items not anticipated within 48 hours. Do we have a motion to adjourn? Okay, second. All right. Um, uh, all in favor? Aye, aye, aye. Aye, aye. All right. Thank you, everybody. Sorry for running a little late, um, but we got to a great consensus, which was well worth the effort. Thank you uh, thank again, you. Alex, for jumping in on the drafting. Um, thank you, for Greg, as, as ever, and have a good night, everybody. Thank, thank you all. Bye-bye. And everybody. All right.